Hi everyone, welcome on another edition of Learn to Sew with Sita. Yes, on today's episode, I'll be teaching you guys on what is called Victorian Cutter. How to draft it out, how to draft your Victorian Cutter. If you can really know, the, the Cutter uh, style is what is in vogue right now. So, there are a lot of designs. So, in the picture showing, you will see that this is an example of the Victorian Cutter. A lot of questions have been popping out. How can I do this? How can I make this? I will put you through on how to draft your Victorian cutter. It's very, very simple. And this video is more of a, 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 an explanatory video. So if you have your pen and your paper, keep them close by as we do this so that you can follow up seat. I will be making use of this measurement. This is the measurement I'll be making use of. The boss, shoulder, waist. Give on the boss half length nipple to nipple measurement. So this is the measurement I'll be making use of. Yeah. This is the measurement I'll be making use of. So with this, I I have my drafts all set right now. We have the shoulder line, we have the bust line, we have the under bust line, the waist line, then the full length and the hem line. Now with my shoulder uh, line, I just marked out half an inch from the very top of my draft paper. Then from my shoulder line to the bust line, I had to make it of 10 inches. I had to make it of 10 inches. Then my under bust, I used 14 inches, which is from the measurement, and my waistline is 17 inches. Then my full length of uh, blouse or bustier of my cutter, I made use of 22 inches and one inch for hemline. So if you are making use of you make use of your own measurement. Now, the first and um, the first thing we have to make do not, right now is to uh, create our dart line. To mark out our dart line, this is the first step. First step we are going to make do. Marking out your dart measurement, which is derived from your nipple to nipple measurement divided by two, and our nipple to nipple measurement is eight. So eight divided by two is four. So from this very point, we will mark out uh, 4 inches to this very place. This is what I mean. From the very shoulder, from this very, very shoulder, we will mark out what, 4 inches from here and mark. We do that all the way. So some people's nipple to nipple measurements vary. Some that of theirs is nine, and some that of theirs uh, is nine. I don't see anything more than that, or it all depends. Unless the person is much more busty, but it's always falling at the range of eight to nine. Yeah, about so. I, the standard, which is for normal measurement, is eight inches. So that is divided by two is four. After we have marked uh, mark out our uh, measurement. So with this, we have to create our yoke. This yoke varies. So many people have theirs with different patterns. Some may want theirs to be much more curvy. Some may want theirs to be a little bit uh, off or sexy. Whatever design you want your Victoria cutter to be at the chest area determines how you design your yoke. So with my, I want to make mine a little bit sexier. So with my measuring tape, I would. Uh, since we, ha we have our bust line at 10 inches, as you can see, it's at 10 inches, I would come up by 1 inch, making it 9 uh, inches. I will make my 9 inches from the very top. And then, from, my, from this joint, I would want to bring my down. At this very place, I want to bring my down by uh, 2 and a half inches. So I will mark out two and a half inches from this very place. But I want mine to go much more down. Like, much more down. <laughs> so with this, making uh, that area, this very top part, one, going up by one inch, and coming down by two and a half inch, I would make my curve. And if I make my curve, I would 
try, I want to go in by half an inch. It's the style I have in mind. So I just wish to go in a little by uh, quarter an inch. Quarter an inch there. So with this, I would trace my hole. that's for my look then I'll be connecting it to my armhole this is our arm uh, measurement whereby the shoulder which was uh, 17 divided by 2 8 and half coming down to 8 inches of from the very top 8 inches so we use any curvy any kind of any curvy rule to uh, mark out your armholes. Mine cannot actually be accurate but it has a very good measuring uh, stuff to make it a bit. So with this I will just try uh, try tracing it way to where I will meet my armhole. So with this I still cut them two. Yeah. So with this, I cut them two. Cut it. Yeah. So it's still well on that line. After which we cut it. I would now we go ahead to measure at our dart and go ahead to make them in different shapes. So with this, we have cut out our uh cut out the particular side we'll be using, we have cut out and created out our yoke. So what we do next now is to partition our corsets. Uh, Depends on how many pieces you want them to turn out to be. But before then, we have to mark out our dark area. So the next thing we have to do is to uh, mark out our dark area. Now from your under bust and waistline, mark out one inch on both sides. And half an inch on both sides from your hemline. If you get what I mean, let's go to that right now. Okay? So, this is your chest line, which is the 9 inches spot. And your balls, which is like the 10 and 10 inches. And your under bust line, waistline length. Right now. So, from this very top part, we will mark out 1 inch on both areas. We are not touching the bust line, we are going to the chest line, which is at that 9 inches, to mark out 1 inch on both sides first. Sorry, I did not note that down. So, from that dark area, which is your midpoint, you mark out 1 inch, this is very side, go out, go to the other side and mark 1 inch. Now, to the waist, to the under bust area, Sorry. We still mark out one inch again on this side and one inch on the other side, just like I said in as I directed on the steps on the, on the paper. Then we do the same thing at the bust at the waist line. One inch here, one inch at the other side. Then we go to the hem area, this very last line. Instead of using one inch, we bring out half an inch. You mark out half an inch and half an inch. So the total of what we are taking out from here is two inches, which is one inch, one inch of here. Two inches, one inch, one inch of this side. Same to this side, but one inch on this place, which is half, half an inch. So we will use our rule to connect. First and foremost, see what we do. This is very, very technical, but if you follow suit, you will get what I mean. This is one inch on this side and one inch on this side. So we are not marking out on the bust area. Rather, we connect this particular point to the dark, to the bust area like this. We connect them to the bust area like this and kick off to marking it like this with our rule to this right place. So this chest area we come to meet at the bust line. And then from the bust line, you make your roots down to this very, uh, very 
this works. You connect this line with your rule to this very point, and then that's for the dart. So we need very, very this very uh, place being marked. Uh, after being connected, we carefully mark them out. But before then, at this very juncture, this very place, we don't have to make it have a sharp uh, teeth like. We have to make it curve the. You can use a free hand sketch to do this, or with the help of any curvy uh, with your curve. Uh, equipment whatsoever so when you're trying to do this you make sure that it is curvy it's not ought to have this sharp teeth so after which we now uh notice that this particular area is to be marked out yeah so we don't need it we want it we don't want it it's unacceptable so with that we would um want to go into this very place because I, I wish to divide my own section into four. I want to go for that too. Uh, by the time I divide mine, I would be having four parts. I will be having four partitions on one on one area. So it's just a total of um, four on this side and four on the other side, which is eight. So I'm making, I'm dividing this uh, particular area into four parts. I would we have done the very first one. This one we will be making another partition here and a final partition at this very place, which will be of three partitions. By the time sorry, if you get what I mean, we are making about three darts on this particular section, which we create about four partitions. So when we make a dart of three, we have four partitions, which is uh, plus the other area which is making it big. Uh, if you get what I mean, yeah. So with this, let's just go further to what we just have. Next, we go in this place by from this very place. We go in by one inch. We go in by one inch, by one and a half inch. Sorry, one and a half inch. So it depends. Some we want to go in by one inch. Some we want to go in by two inch, one and a half inch. But I choose to make my one and a half. So. I'm going in by one and a half inch. I'm going in by one and a half uh, inch. So with this, we uh, make a rule. Yeah, we make a rule. We rule this. Marking it, we now make a rule. So having done that, after connecting your line, sorry, I was saying connecting your rule. <laughs> sorry for my grammar, please. No much of grammar. Let's just do the main thing. <laughs> So after making, sorry, after creating your line, okay, we will go. We will focus on the underbust and the waist measurement. If you know this, uh, if you can see this, uh, cut at the kind of uh, uh, the much uh, emphasis are made on the underbust and the waist measurement. So we will focusing more of this uh, second and third that. On the waist and the on the underbust and waist measurement. So on the underbust measurement, we will go in by quarter and inch. We don't want to use half an inch this time. We go in by quarter and inch. We go in by quarter and inch. Quarter and inch. On both sides. Quarter and inch on both sides. So we would now come to connect it at this very place where we come to draw our rule. We will make it we will connect it from here to this very place down to this place and still terminate it at this place. So we, we are not removing anything from the hemline or from the bust area. We are just making the emphasis on the under bust and waist measurement. So let's connect our points. So I haven't done that. I haven't terminated as uh, terminate our point on the bust and the hemline. We mark it out. So the total of what we have taken from this very section is half an inch, half an inch. Take note. Why that of this one we have taken 
two inches, which is one inch, one inch on both sides. Why we try to take record of this is in order for us to add our allowance to put back these uh, uh, very measurements we are taking out for that. If not, you have problems with your clothes. They will be too small. Your corset might be too small and maybe have issues while sewing them. So uh, there are more shortage if there is no, if there, these uh, inches are not being put back. So we will do our third partition. And uh, for the third one, so we have one section and a second section. So what we do next now is to mark out three inches from this very same that. We will take out three inches. We will mark out three inches. Three inches. Carefully mark them out. Three inches from this that very first that that we created, which was a uh, uh, four inches. So take note that we're taking we I'm placing my measure my tape from this very line to mark out three inches. So after marking out that three inches, we make a line. So with this being um, measured out, um, being with our line being turned, we still go to the underbust and waist measurement. This time around, we will go in by a quarter and inch. We will go in by half an inch, sorry. We will go in by half an inch. We will go in by half an inch. Same on the waist um, line. Half an inch, half an inch. Then we connect the line, same as what we did to this very first case. So we connect the line to our chest region, then do the same to this very spot, terminating it here. So after connecting our lines, we well, this area is just cut there, <laughs> and that is our third. Uh, Partition. Sorry, I made an error. So we have here as the first, here as the second, here as the third, and finally the fourth. Sorry, I made an error. So we have our four partitions ready. So we will now take our main body measurement. Main body measurement. If you can recall our measurement, our bust, which is uh, 40 divided by 4, 10 inches. Our shoulder, we have done that already. Our waist is 33 inches divided by 4. We get 8 and a half. Okay, uh, eight and what's my area? 10 inches. This is 10 inches. Now, recall that in case you want to do yours, maybe before you create, um, before, if you are going to find it difficult, maybe making out your main measurement before. Uh, any much of more difficulty creating your main measurement after cutting your yoke, you make your measurement before cutting your yoke. Get me? So, with this, it's just that I was a bit calculative of what I'm trying to do. Then, 10 inches for our main measurement, for our first measurement, we recall that we removed uh, 2 inches from uh, from the dart, which we add, making it 12, we add 2 inches, making it uh, 12. So, after adding uh, 2 inches of these ones that we are taking out, we go to the underbust. So, our underbust is 33 uh, inches, which is the main waist, that's that how we measure my waist. So, our underbust is... Um, 33, so 33 divided by 4 we give us um, 8 quarter, 8 and 1 quarter. So this is 8 and quarter. Now, we removed half an inch from here, which is quarter and inch, quarter and inch, which is half an inch here, plus um, 2 inches, one, uh, 1 inch, 1 inch on both sides, 2 inches, 
and then one inch, which is half an inch, half an inch on this side. So the total of what we are taking so far is one plus two, which is three. We took three and a quarter. So we add three and quarter. We start with eight. Eight plus three will give you eleven plus quarter of an eleven. So That is 11 and a quarter. For this one, 11 and a quarter. So we now go to our waist and do the same. Because the person actually is bold on both the underboard and her waist measurement. So we will still make use of the 33. So if you if yours, you make sure you make take measurements of here yours and work on your own measurement. So it depends. Then on our last way with make the forty forty, which is four inches, um, which is ten inches plus um plus that of one that we can use. So we trace out our measurements. Trace them out. So you don't need to be scared. If yours is not that way, it's just your measurement. So you don't have to be scared about it. Because this particular area won't be needed. Uh, so after that, we going to make the back. If you get what I mean by doing the back. Uh, we are creating a box that is, there is this uh, uh, funny, uh, a V like shape you have in your Victorian quarter that's usually at the waist region, region that's coming down to the very tip. I don't know how a Victorian quarter to be without the back. So, um, uh, actually, it's what made it a bit different from um, every other, it's what made it different from every other quarter you might know. So, a Victorian quarter usually have the back. So while taking your measurements for your back, you start from your waistline to come down. Some people will make use of two inches, two and a half, three inches, depending on how uh, pointed they want their own back to be. So I'm taking two inches from my waistline down. I'm taking two inches from my waistline. So I'm taking it, the measurements downwards. So I'm marking out two inches from my waistline. And with that, I am making a call. I am I'm trying to trace it to the very end. So with this, you've created your back. So we will now uh, cut them out. And this is just for the draft. Know that on each section, while you are trying to uh, uh, place them on when you are making the using your graphs to take measurements on your material. Try as much as possible to put sewing allowance. You can put quarter and inch. While cutting it, you make sure that when you are cutting, uh, placing them on your fabric, you cut for you bring out an allowance of quarter and inch on every side of the uh, pattern in order not to have any shortage. So let's cut our cutters and I will show you how it looks like. So this is how our cutter is being cut. We have cut them out and we have four partitions on here. But when we line them up, you will see what I mean. We go further to line them up. So this one, which is the very first uh, piece, stays at the middle. Then this is the second partition. When you're doing this, please be very, very careful because you can place them in a different way and you'll be like, why didn't I read them well? What happened? So on this very first one this is the very first one it stays this way so people might go for that to divide them into two which is good so when i still partition my as well if you don't want to do yours that will depend on the pattern you want to make yours fine and good but i'll go for that to divide my one into two so the second one is placed this way then on the other angle this one is placed this way this is the way I place them. 
opposite side, just like when you see yourself at the mirror. <laughs> so the third one is placed this way. Place this way. And the other one, which is this way, we now come to this opposite direction to place this way. So the last one, which is the fourth one, will be placed this way. And opposite direction this way. So you can see that our cutlass is taking a different shape. It's taking a shape already. It's taking shape. A very nice one after that. So having uh, done this, um, what you do is to place them on the material or fabric you wish to use. Uh, while cutting them, bring that allowance on your fabric. Cut, make an allowance on your fabric in order not to have shortage while you are sewing. So when you join all this are just to be joined and join like this we are done for the front part of our cutters so let's move into the back side there's nothing much there but i want to put you guys through so that's that for the front side let's move into the back side of our cutters so that's our back uh, area we have marked the normal body just like the way uh, our front panel was before we started working on it. As you can see, this is just the armhole, the derived armhole from the shoulder, which is uh, the shoulder divided by two. Then we created our arc. This is the bust line. Here is the under bust. Here is your waist line. And finally, here is that of your uh, full length. And your hemline yeah so with that we we come to do the back the back there's no much depth in it so um as you can see there are some uh victorian cutters one might see and you see that there are like something like a, a lace a lace uh, like uh this uh pattern you see in your shoelace that is done at the back of it the loop they call it loop or so where you can insert your uh, your tooth lace as to tie it. So in my own case, I decided not to use that because of the pattern of what I want to make with my own cutters. I now have to use a zip. I'm using a zip instead of a shoe, uh, instead of a, a loop or a, a lace. So in this case, I have to first and foremost mark my zip allowance. I have to multiply my zip allowance and my zip allowance I'm making it of one and a half inch. I'm making it of one and a half inch. I'm marking it out. So from the one and a half inch which is for the zip allowance I will mark my my that which is four inches from the zip allowance four inches or zip allowance for inches. Please don't mind that I did not rule it first. <laughs> rule yours before you make it of yours. Please. My rule is a bit funny. <laughs> That's why I'm not making use of it or to stay in it. So whichever way you rule your zipper before you rule your uh, uh before you start making a mark for your that. So I my back doesn't don't actually have to be like this. It has to uh I have to create my own yoke for it. So this time around is just by like bringing it down. I want my 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 cutter to be down at the back. So I will come in from the bust line, I will come down by two inches. It depends on how low you want yours to be. So if you don't want yours to be too low, you can lift it or come down by one inch. If you want yours to be too too low, you can make it three inch, depending on how you want yours to be. So I choose mine to be two inches. So from two inches I create my line I trace it, connecting it to my arm hole joint. So I am tracing it to this very point. So after which I cut it out, and then we now face the business. So let's cut it out. So with this, uh, the first line we created was one and a half inch, which is for zipper allowance. For zip allowance. If you don't want to use uh, a zip allowance, you don't need to add 
that to your measurement. You just um, from here measure out your four inches for that, just like what we did at the front part. But because I want to put zipper for mine, I had to measure out one and a half inch for zipper, and then from there had to for my zipper measure out my four inches for that. So in case you wish not, uh, in case you wish to put yours a loop or a uh, 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 a, a lace for it to be open at the back you don't need to add your zip allowance you just have to measure out your four inches from here for your dad but in as much that i wish to put zipper for my i have to uh, measure out my zipper allowance and for my zipper allowance uh put uh my mark house four inches for my dad so this hack here you see which i had to take out was um, my yoke at the back. I want to take my down. So I had to, from my bust line, take down two inches to trace it to my arm hole joint. So with that, I will just trace it and cut it out. So having cut this, having cut the yoke, I we will go to the dark area, which is the underboss and the waistline measurement. So, as we did at the front side of the cutback, we will take one inch from the underboss side, we take one inch on the right and same one inch at the other side. On both sides, we take one, one inch, same as at the waistline. At the waistline, we take one inch and take one inch again at the other side. Then coming to the neckline, this very spot at where this started, uh, the line we come to take one inch again and one inch on the other side. So we will use our rule and connect this line. You are all going to come straight to terminate at the hem line. So they will come this way and terminate at the end line. By the time we connect the line, you will see the outcome of the gap. The outcome, I mean, of the gap. So, having connected the line, we have um, um, marked out the unwanted area. So, you can see how we connected it, just like an arrow pointing down. It's all terminating at the same line. So, we take our normal body measurements, just like our the waistline. The bust is 40 inches plus the 2 inches added, which is 12. We are starting from the zip allowance area, not just from this very side, from the zip allowance area. So, with that, we just mark it out. Like I said earlier, if we are not going to be too careful to dictate this particular spot to know where to start, or if you're not careful with the measurement, you can as well measure it before cutting your yoke. So the honor boss is 33 uh, inches divided by 4, which is 8 and a quarter. Then 8 and quarter plus the 2 inches added, which was 2 is removed, which we add back, is 11 and a quarter. So 11 and a quarter we will mark out from the zip allowance and the tape and mark. Yeah. We do the same at the waist. Line, like I said, the person's waist and on the bust is the same, so we still use uh, 11 and a quarter from the zip allowance and the tip. Then at the blouse area, we use 40. Then we, we will add a because we remove it like half an inch from there, which we add back. You can see, and this one just for people's sake. So we will create a line. We will connect our line. And that's it for the back. So if you wish to divide yours more, you can add as many inches uh if you want to go ahead to 
partition your back side fine and good but i'm okay with partitioning mine into four which is this and this and on the other side this and this making it four pieces at the back so i'm okay with that which is this is second so i'm okay with having two partitions on each side of my back which is total of four so if you wish to add more partition you can go ahead to add um another partition um by maybe taking from here taking three inches from your first dart and do vice versa thing so if you want to add another partition like i said you will just follow from here create like three inches and then maybe take half and half an inch or quarter and quarter an inch but you know that whatsoever you remove here remember to add them back while taking your basic uh body measurements so with that we will still recall that there was a back at that uh, uh back um, if you wish to put your own backs fine and good if you don't want to do that you can leave that so with this we will cut this out and then we see the outcome So having this as mind, I still have to make my back because if you alter the uh, measurement by the side, it is not being put. Um, so I had to still mark two inches for my back at this point here, and then trace it. But at this time, uh, you don't have to terminate it to this very place in order not to look very silly at this area. So you just uh, trace it carefully to terminate at this point before getting to your half length. So before getting to the full blouse, so you just terminate it. Please try doing this before you cut because I made an error. I didn't uh, uh, mark out my back area. So after this we cut and then I show you everything finally like what we have achieved so far so having got that this is how it looks like so your back is just terminating right before your dad just at the very spot that your dad is so this is how it's gonna be like so with this you just have four pieces at the back so you took out four pieces at the back which is this 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 way and then so having got that this is how it looks like so your back is just terminating right before your dad just at the very spot that your dad is so this is how it's gonna be like so with this you just have four pieces at the back so you took out four pieces at the back which is this 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 way and then this way so this is what you have at your back so this is just for the zipper this area a total of three inches which is half one and a half inch one and a half inch weighted is for your zipper so in order not to misplace it or mismark it you just as a spy it this way just like it is at our front view so with this you are able to craft your victorian quarters having the knowledge of this you can apply it in any way in any form whatever whatever way you want to create your yoke you can do it just knowing very well on how to uh and um, um, make your dad what and what to measure out and then knowing how many sections or partitions you wish to make yours. So with this basic uh, way, um, way I did that of my Victorian Cossack, apart from the yoke, you can apply your Victorian Cossack in any way. So if you're confused in any form, feel free to ask your questions, comment. And if it's your first time watching this channel, I would love that you subscribe, do well to subscribe, and give a thumbs up if you really love what i just thought 
So feel free to ask a question on the next video. I'll be going further to uh, teach you guys how to join these partitions together and how to sew your Victoria Cossacks, that is sewing it, bone and also boning it as well. So with that, you are going to be an expert in Victoria Cossacks. So feel free, ask the questions. I really want to uh, hear your um, questions know whatsoever your view confused has i will be available to respond to you as soon as possible so with this we're giving it a wrap up on drafting victorian cossacks see you next time same channel bye